So I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we meet and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. So my name is Malani Raj and I'm a member of the Women on Board's Cultural Diversity Advisory Committee. So I've been passionate about cultural diversity and have been advocating for cultural diversity and inclusion for about 20 years at an organisational level. But it's become apparent to me that there is very little cultural diversity on boards and that means that executives when they're executing strategy might have might not have a strategy that effectively has a diversity and inclusion lens. So um, Australia is one of the most culturally diverse countries in the world. About 25% of people are born overseas and about one-fifth of people um, speak a language other than English at home but diversities and bo diversity on boards don't reflect this and they should. Today this is a spotlight on diversity cultural diversity series featuring culturally diverse women and their allies supporting cultural diversity on boards. So I'd like to introduce Sankita Venkatesan, who is Chairman of Fairvine Super and also involved in several other boards, which she will be talking to you today about. So hi, Sangeeta, thank you for joining us today and taking part in our Spotlight on Cultural Diversity and Inclusion series. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like you to tell us a bit about your career and the boards you serve on. Sure. Uh, firstly, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this. Um, it is an absolute pleasure and it is great to talk more about diversity on boards and I am delighted to be part of it today. Uh, a bit about myself and what boards I serve on. Um, I'm originally from India, born and brought up in South of India. Uh, spent some time in North of India studying there and I have been fortunate to live and work in a few different countries including India, Hong Kong, Singapore, the UK and Australia. Um, in terms of my background it's been mainly investment banking that's how I started although I moved to capital markets focused on fixed income, debt capital markets, foreign exchange payments, um, then back into banking and more recently investment management. The boards I serve on, um, I serve on the board of Fairvine Super, it's a super innovation fund as chairman, as a non-executive chairman of an ADI applicant, which is a subsidiary of an ASX listed company called Novati. On the board of Women in Banking and Finance, which is a not-for-profit organization that supports women's agenda in the banking and finance sector. NED of Cancer Aid, which is a health tech company that is committed to supporting people that go through cancer journey, both cancer patients and their families, and enables them to return to work faster. Uh, it's a, it's a definitely something that I'm really close to from, from my own personal journey. I recently joined the board of uh, RSL Life Care, which is an aged care. And I also sit on the investment committee of EG Funds Management, which is a real estate fund manager. I sit on a few committees, including Australia and India Business Council, as my way of keeping in touch with what's happening between Australia and India, and also the Risk Australia Advisory Board. Wow, that's a huge portfolio. Um, so can you tell us about how you got your first board role? My first board, I think it was just by default. I wasn't even focused on a board career proactively. It all started four years ago when I decided to quit my corporate career and start my own businesses. I ended up getting involved with two people or two companies and co-founding two companies. And as you can imagine, you can't be the CEO of both companies. Um, so I had to pick and choose how I'm going to divide my time and ensure that I'm, I stay relevant with both the companies. Fairwine was one of them and my co-founders initially wanted me to be the CEO, but because I couldn't be there full time, we decided that I will be the chairman of the company. So as you can see, it was really by default. It was out of necessity that I started as chairman of Fairwine. And it was an incredible learning. Um, I mean, it was an incredible opportunity for me and a path to learning and evolving into a board career. And I'm grateful for the opportunity. Awesome. So um, do you think your cultural um, heritage has impacted your board career positively? And tell us about your story. Wow, it's, it's hard to say because, like I said earlier, I, have, I wasn't actively focused on a board career. And given I evolved into a board career, it wasn't really about 
necessarily being part of boards that need me for from a cultural diversity perspective. The way I look at it, I don't think my cultural diversity has impacted positively or negatively, which is good. Negatively is definitely not there. When I look back at my board journey, which is quite recent, it's been skills-based and experience from working in different geographies. So I really put it down to geographical and functional experience and expertise. And each and every board role has been predominantly on the back of the experience and skills I have gained. But having said that, being culturally sensitive and having the ability to interact with people from different cultures, absolutely, definitely is a plus. And I think it would have influenced to some extent positively at a subconscious level. So what advice would you give to a inspiring board members from a non-Anglo-Celtic background? Well, um, I guess be yourself. Um, If I were to speak more broadly from a board perspective for any aspiring board members, um, it's really about focus on your skills and experience and make sure you really focus on your executive career to gain that experience. The other aspect I would add to it is network. And that goes back to perhaps being culturally diverse. And if you're not from Australia and if you've moved here recently or you haven't had the same upbringing uh, to make you feel that you fit into the Australian Anglo-Celtic background, try and network as much as you can. To some extent, a level of EQ is essential uh, to fit in, but it doesn't mean you lose your authenticity. So stay authentic, gain experience, network a lot, and try and have some level of EQ to be able to fit in. Uh, I'll just add a bit more in terms of my own journey. Yeah. To date, perhaps except one, every board role that I have has been through my network. It's been through reference. And the referrals are not necessarily from my cultural heritage, they are across the board. And so therefore I can't emphasize the the, the need to network and ensure that uh, you stay in touch with. Thank you. So would you have any advice on how to get those networks in terms of how do people go about getting network? Personally, again, I'll talk about my own journey. I try to not say no to events and networking opportunities. That's pretty much it. Um, And the more you say yes, the more people you meet and you never know how these people can influence your life in a positive manner. Thank you. So thank you for that advice and thank you for sharing your story. It's been a pleasure having you today and we wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Melanie. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.